start the start the broadcast. Hello everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's early morning time. For some of you, many of you, I'm sure your day has probably already begun. It is, uh, if this is your first time joining, I'm Jess. I am the founder of Black Travelers Network, the travel community that aims to sh travel with our, our folks and explore not just the world, not just the African diaspora, but to use travel as a tool and a technique uh, for us to become more involved in and engaged in the world around us and, and to learn from various people uh, from a variety of different cultures. And so welcome uh, to today. If you have not clicked the subscribe button, I hope you click the subscribe button because we like to make sure you stay in the loop when it comes to travel content. Also, if you appreciate the topic that we're covering today, go ahead and click that like button uh, because that also helps to get the word out. Now, this broadcast is not going to be one uh, that is coming from popular opinion, so please uh, bear with me uh, because I, I, I always like to look at situations from a bit of a different perspective. Before I get into the broadcast today, if you, well, before I get into the topic today, <laughs> if you are not familiar with our travel experiences that we have coming up, uh, do not hesitate to uh, take a closer look at this list that you should see before you. And these are the destinations that we are looking to travel to and if you have any interest in joining any one of these travel experiences, definitely uh, reach out to us uh, by emailing us at blacktravelersnetwork at gmail.com. Once again, that's blacktravelersnetwork uh, at gmail.com. And travelers is spelled T-R-A-V-E-L-E-R-S. Uh, so it's just one L. So make sure you reach out and express your interest. Uh, pretty soon uh, we will begin to meet with travelers to discuss uh, more in depth these travel experiences that we have on the list. And for those of you who are excited about travel, who want to travel with amazing, cool people, uh, this uh, experience, these experiences are definitely designed uh, to get you uh, out there and to make sure you're not alone. So definitely uh, check out uh, our travel experiences that we have uh, coming up. And so with that being said, let's get into today's topic, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a quicker broadcast today, um, but I did want to let you know that this story is a hot off the press and developing story. It's a story about one of the countries that we absolutely truly love. If you looked at the list, you will see South Africa is always on our list of destinations to travel. It is in fact, and indeed, one of the most beautiful countries in the world. When it comes to the overall landscape, when it comes to the overall people, we absolutely love and adore the beautiful country of South Africa. It, to me, it's always been uh, one of my absolute favorite places uh, to, to visit when it comes to uh, the African continent. I, I feel like I couldn't get to see too many places around the world because I just love South Africa so much. And so my critique of South Africa in this instance is a direct result of me having spent many years visiting the country and me talking to the people of the country and learning about the history and the culture of the country. So I'm just going to be honest in my perspective and my critique of this very beautiful country. Uh, you know, we 
feel that this is one of the most important countries to visit whenever you decide you want to visit the African continent. It should be at the top, if not the top of your list. But this is a fresh story because South Africa just made a very bold move by filing genocide charges against the country of Israel. And here's what you need to know about the charges that South Africa has filed. They went to the highest court, the UN's highest court, uh, and they accused Israel of carrying out genocide uh, in the Gaza Strip. And South Africa filed an 84-page document uh, the 84 page document is a, a robust document, but it's very detailed oriented. They cited a number of things in this document. One of the things that they cited is that from October 2023 to December 2023, Israel killed approximately 17,177 Palestinians. Uh, they stated that December 7th of 2023, you could experience uh, or, or find in the record that there was one Palestinian killed every four minutes. That's a lot of people. One Palestinian killed every four minutes and that they have wiped out whole families and are expelling Palestinians from the Gaza Strip. They also assert in their document that 84% of Palestinians have been forced to leave their homes. 60% of the Palestinian homes in the Gaza Strip area have been destroyed. Uh, there, in that area, they have designated safety routes for Palestinian civilians uh, to walk. These are deemed safe routes and off limits. Uh, but they're saying that civilians have been targeted along the safe routes. They've also said that most humanitarian efforts have failed because they cannot get food to the Palestinians and more Palestinians are expected to starve to death or die from disease as opposed to the airstrikes. Their document, the South Africans document, as it's presented to the United Nations, they include specific statements from the president of Israel confirming the desire to commit genocide against Palestinians as well as the Israeli minister of energy. They also cite a number of other specific quotes from high officials who have been very public about how they plan to handle uh, the Palestinians and how they plan to handle the Gaza Strip. They've also made statements. Uh, there's also a statement in the 84 page document from the deputy speaker of the Israeli Knesset. I visited the Knesset. It's been many years, but I've definitely been to the Knesset. And um, the deputy speaker of the Israeli Knesset has stated that the common goal is to erase the Gaza Strip from the face of the earth. And they have a direct quote in that their document. South Africa also asserts that uh, the, that the that the goal of Israel is to permanently take out uh, all the Palestinians. And that is a lot of the foundation of the genocide claim that is presented in uh, South Africa's 84 page document uh, that is directed to the United Nations for them to intervene. And it's important that you know in terms of the process and how it typically works uh, that cases uh, presented to the UN are decided by a 15 member panel. Uh, it is a situation where the majority vote rules, but in the event of a tie, the lead judge will decide, uh, well, will cast the deciding vote in terms of how the case will be handled or, or what the charges uh, are. Are they guilty or are they not guilty? Um, but the decision could take months or it could take years. But even though that decision can come much further down the road, uh, the United Nations also can 
uh, interfere and offer specific remedies sooner rather than later. It's going to be completely up to the UN as to how they want uh, to, to handle uh, this case. That's what we know thus far. And here's what I have to say about it. Because, you know, it's very interesting. <laughs> and I laugh not because it's funny, it's just sad. Um, it's very interesting that this is coming from South Africa. You know, I, I just want to be on record in saying that, you know, what's happening in the Gaza Strip to the Palestinians is absolutely horrific, you know. Uh, Israel's response has really been very simply put that they are defending themselves because the militant group Hamas, uh, which was kind of birthed out of uh, the Palestinian area, um, Hamas attacked them on October 7, 2023, and they uh, they, being uh, Israel, lost a little over a thousand people in the initial attack. So their claim in this whole issue is that they are just simply defending themselves. But overall, it's not a good situation. But when we think of South Africa, I'm, I'm so shocked <laughs> that South Africa is stepping up and saying genocide. And I'm like, are we talking about South Africa who implemented the apartheid system against its own South African people? Is this the South Africa who still has the system of apartheid in place with there being a white minority running the country and controlling all of the resources? Let's make no mistake. The remnants of South Africa, uh, the remnants of so the South African genocide uh, I'm sorry, the South African apartheid system is still very much in place. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is very much a genocidal system, you know. And so I'm also like, are we, we can't be talking about the same South Africa who tried to wipe out all of the black South Africans. You know, South Africa who locked up people who stood up to their oppressive system are we talking about that south africa talking about some genocide charges against israel they really need to fix the problems that exist in south africa because there is obvious a system of apartheid that still exists in that country today you have to be there to kind of see it it doesn't look the same as it looked when it was at its at its height but it's 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 still there and this too is very much a genocidal system that they are supporting in their own country the fact that they are accusing israel of genocide it's like look at the pot calling the kettle black they are ones to, to talk i feel really bad uh, for those palestinians but at the same time we have issues because our U.S. government is very supportive of Israel. The government is also uh, pretty supportive of South Africa as well. You know, the United States have had an a, a interesting relationship with South Africa uh, over many years, but post-apartheid, post um, the relationship has over time become much more friendly but we too we too me too we too uh here in america are feeling the effects of our own oppressive system when it comes to being black people in america so you know it's the best of luck to the palestinians but we too here in america as black folks are fighting back against an oppressive system but you know these charges absolutely shock me when it comes to South Africa it's like okay I can understand the message right message 
you know, kind of like the wrong messenger. I mean, because the, uh, any type of oppressive system that even resembles apartheid, which is what you'll find in South Africa today. Again, I'm, I'm saying it doesn't look the same way, but it is not that far of a departure. That is a genocidal system. The only difference is, is forcing people into systems and, and, and situations where they're dying a very slow death. And so I just want to highlight that. And that's why I say this is not a popular opinion at all. You know, this is, it is what it is, but please to the pro Palestinians who feel compelled to barge into black churches and attempt to hijack the progress that black Americans are working to make as we focus on our own issues here in America, please stop doing that please stop doing that. You do not show up to support anything related to the black community and the oppression or the oppressiveness that we have faced in America or for that matter around the world. Stop trying to enter into our spaces and redirect our our messages and make it about your issue when it comes to Palestine. Black churches is not the place, nor is it the space to raise issues about what's happening in the Gaza Strip or to support the, the, the Palestinian movement. It's deemed very disrespectful. And I hope you understand that the last stunt you pulled when Biden actually spoke in the black church and you know there was all these chants that started breaking out about uh, uh palestine that actually did turn a lot of black people off who are more likely to be supportive of you know the oppression that you are facing and so i just wanted to come on and draw everyone's uh, attention to that uh, uh, story because it is a story. I don't think it's really being covered widely at this point uh, when it comes to uh, many news reports, at least uh, locally, but it is a big issue. And I suspect that over uh, the next several days, you are likely to hear more of it on the news and so i did want to say just make sure you pay attention to the issue again when it comes to those of us uh primarily those of us in black america you know this is an election season we have a lot of things that we want to see in our own communities addressed and so we don't have the space or the bandwidth to really focus on what's going on in other spaces and other places we we have a set of issues that we'd like our government, our country uh, to, to make sure that we are, are adequately able to get and receive for our communities. And so that's all I have, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't forget to uh, like this topic, <laughs> like this video, uh, and also hit the subscribe button. Uh, as it, it definitely encourages uh, conversations on this platform to continue. And so until next time, ladies and gentlemen.